Hey guys, what's up? So as many of you are already aware, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild has recently received its 1.6.0 update, which has enabled a brand new gyroscope enabled VR mode for the Nintendo Switch. The footage you're watching right now is in fact of that VR mode that was introduced in 1.6.0, and while a lot of people were super, super hyped and excited for this newly announced game mode, once it actually released a lot of people people were pretty much disappointed with what Nintendo had provided them. Personally, I actually really, really like the implementation that they went with, despite the fact that there are some severe limitations, especially so in relation to frame rate and resolution. Now, as I said, considering the hardware specs of the Switch itself, the resolution and the frame rate is, I guess, semi forgivable, you could say, but by far my biggest gripe with this implementation and any VR mode on the Switch is with the Nintendo Labo itself. It just isn't a good experience and it's not fun to have to hold the Labo up to your face all the time and unless you're going to be lying on a bed or something with it strapped to your face held there somehow, it pretty much makes it impossible for any kind of extended VR gameplay sessions. This paired with the fact that it's also being played in third person was definitely a no-go for a lot of VR users. While yes, you can use the first person mod which I personally showcased on the channel a few weeks ago, however, even with the available availability of that mod, it's still only going to be usable by people who have homebrewed, hacked and have usable unpatched switches, basically meaning that this mode and mod is not going to be playable or usable for your average user on the Nintendo Switch. Thankfully, with the help of some talented modders in the PC emulation community, in combination with reshade and some rendering trickery, we now have a much, much more playable VR experience for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild on PC. To demonstrate just how well this works, I wanted to get this raw capture and some actual on-camera footage of myself to show exactly how well the gyroscope input works in combination with streaming the gameplay footage from my PC to my Android phone using Nvidia GameStream. While it's quite difficult to show you just how well it looks in the headset itself, I can tell you it looks absolutely amazing, especially so when you consider that it's being streamed to my mobile device at 1440p and 60 frames per second second in each eye. So what exactly am I using in order to get this gameplay experience? Well, as most of you know, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is not only playable on the Wii U and the Nintendo Switch, as many and most of you who follow this channel for any extended period of time already know, it is also fully playable on CMU, an emulator for the Nintendo Wii U. Not only is it fully playable on this emulator, it is also fully playable at frame rates exceeding 30 frames per second. Breath of the Wild on CMU can actually push pretty much any frame rate as the game itself has received a dynamic frame rate patch, which unlocks the frame rate from 30 and lets it run at pretty much anything your PC can push. As I previously said, and for demonstration purposes in this video, I am currently running it at 1440p at a perfectly locked 60 frames per second. The rendering trickery of which I previously spoke is attained by using a reshade in combination with some experimental shaders, one by the name of Super Adept 3D which reads the depth buffer of CMU emulator and displays it like you're seeing right now and the other is a polynomial barrel distortion which is currently set to monoscopic and also custom edited so that it perfectly works with both the lens configuration and also the distance between lenses for my, to be honest, fairly cheap $25 VR headset for my Android device. The motion telemetry data is then translated via CMU and CMU hook from my Android device using an Android motion source input and as you can very clearly see when I turn my head there is very very little latency and when compared to the motion we have when using the Switch VR mode, at least in relation to the gyroscope movement, I would have to say that the experience is pretty much the exact same. So with the gyroscope movement being basically identical between the Nintendo Switch and the Nintendo Wii U emulator, what exactly are the advantages and disadvantages of both? First up, we'll take a look at the Nintendo Switch implementation where, to activate it, literally all you have to do is activate the VR goggles mode in your options menu, that is, once you've updated your game to version 1.6.0. Once activated, this is exactly what you're going to be met with, two separately rendered viewports, which obviously are now going to be compatible with the Nintendo Labo VR headset. Obviously, you're going to need to own a said VR headset, and depending on your region, it's going to cost you between around 35 and 
40 US dollars. Performance and resolution wise we are looking at pretty much 480p for each eye and while I do not currently have the technology or hardware available to me to measure the frame rate on my Nintendo Switch I would have to say that it's running anywhere between around 25 and 30 frames per second again depending on where you are in the game world. Next let's take a look at the emulated version of Breath of the Wild. In this version we are running as I previously said at 1440p resolution per eye and also at a perfectly locked 60 frames per second at all times in gameplay. There is one key difference between the Nintendo Switch version and the emulated version on CMU emulator however, in order to have a proper motion tracking like you saw me demonstrate at the start of this video, you are required to at all times play this game in first person mode due to the fact that it is in fact a hack in this first person mod that allows the integration and usage of motion telemetry data for head tracking movement in the game. Now while some people might say this is a key advantage and some people might say it's a disadvantage, it is still a fairly large difference between the Switch version and the emulated Wii U version. Another key difference between the two versions is the fact that while yes I think the CMU version when you have the hardware to push better frame rates and higher resolutions is a much more enjoyable experience, it also requires a lot of setup and as I already said in order to maintain these high resolutions and high frame rates you're going to need a really really high spec gaming PC. Personally and in my own opinion I think the CMU emulator version is by far the better experience especially so considering all of the reshade profiles for both the depth 3D and the polynomial barrel distortion is fully customizable by each individual user. These customizations are very very important especially when you consider all of the differences and variances between the different headsets and the different Android devices and in future once full support for motion tracking on a full integrated desktop VR units like the HTC Vive and Oculus Rift is implemented, I truly believe that this mod and this mode is going to be at the forefront of the Breath of the Wild virtual reality experience. If you already own a virtual reality headset or indeed an Android box like the one I'm using in this video, I'm going to leave you with a few minutes of this mod in unedited gameplay so you can get a taste of exactly what this mod is like right now. Before I go, I want to give a massive thank you to all of my Patreon supporters Supporters. If you want to help the channel in its day-to-day -day running, please consider heading over to patreon.com and helping out. As I always say, pledges and donations are 100% not required for me to help you with anything you see in my videos, but they are massively, massively appreciated and really do help me in running the channel. Once again guys, cheers for checking out the video, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.